don't stop the music i say yeah i love the sound of that did you just hear that but i love the sound of that i love hip hop i think it just wakes me up it's so morning music for me well if you're a music lover i have something very interesting for you now tell me how many times has it been that you know you've been sitting and strumming your guitar or you know playing the drums and your parents come and say something like drop the music get a job and eventually you end up getting a job now don't worry you can actually be in the be in the boardroom and still make an impression using your musical skills because today's lesson is all about musical idioms which can be used in business english and they actually make a great impression and make you come across as this really cool savvy person ready so today's lesson with me reema is about musical idioms used in business english <music> Start with today's lesson. Like I said, we're going to talk about musical idioms used in business English. Now you can use these and make a great impression. We're going to look at six of them first, and the first one being "call the tune." Now, what do you think this means? Call the tune. Can you call tunes, or is it like a caller tune on your phone? Sorry, I'm just confusing you. It's none of that. Call the tune means actually. to be someone who makes decisions or calls the shots or has authority so now you know that uh, if you're at work if you're in the office there's only one person who calls the tunes and that happens to be your boss like for example if i have to use uh, this idiom in a sentence i would say something like Uh, my boss is the only one who calls the tunes in office well he called the tune and i could say nothing against him so that just means somebody in a position of authority actually giving out orders or making important decisions or just kind of you know making sure that everyone knows who's the boss well that's all about calling the tune that's your musical idiom which you can use for the next time when you're talking to your boss and he's calling the tune well the next one is ring a bell i'm assuming you don't work in a old school office wherein they ring a bell every hour i'm sure not well it's got nothing to do with ringing a bell really it's actually about remembering so ringing a bell actually means to recall so imagine if you're going to this office party and you meet someone that you may have dealt with in the past but are unable to recall the person's name you could just ask your colleague you could say something like uh, who's that gentleman with the white hair he doesn't ring a bell but still seems familiar so that means you're unable to recall details about that person but yes you actually do believe that you've met him before so that's all about ringing a bell or you could say something simple like um i may have noticed this piece of information before but right now it doesn't ring a bell so you are not sure whether you remember anything pertaining to that topic or that person but it seems familiar and when you actually do recall you can say hey that rings a bell i've done this before so that's how you use the idiom ring a bell in business english So moving on the next musical idiom that we're going to look at is for a song. Now this one's my favorite and no it doesn't have anything to do with a song but it really means something very fun. It means at a very low cost. So imagine you crack a deal and you're not spending anything on the deal almost nothing like negligible amount on the deal and it's very very lucrative for you then you could say something like we crack the deal with our client for a song which means you could actually be paying for the deal in a song with a song so it's that easy that lucrative and that economical for you which is why we use the idiom for a song so uh well i went and bought a car for a song can you imagine i wish they gave away cars especially ferraris for a song and that's my dream i hope it comes true some day but that's your idiom for a song make sure you use it it's very fun and very very effective moving on uh, the next one is uh, actually yeah this one too i like this one too it's called blow your trumpet 
No, it doesn't mean that you carry your grandfather's old trumpet, take it to office and blow it really loud and drive people crazy. That's definitely not what it means. It means basically bragging or boasting about yourself. So imagine now you have this really awesome product that your company has made and you're about to launch it in the market. Now before launching you want to create that really good buzz in the market. What are you going to do? You're going to blow your own trumpet. So you're going to talk about how great your product is, how innovative it is and you're going to actually create this positive buzz by blowing your own trumpet. That's right. So that's what it means. It means to brag or boast about your personal achievements, about a product, your company, your colleagues, your employees, something on those lines. And yes, it can actually create a lot of positive impact for you and your product or for your deal, you know, because clients are actually going to buy this information. They are actually going to believe that, yeah, whatever he or she is sharing is actually the truth. So you can actually escalate matters a little. You can actually, you know, kind of praise your product product a little more than it deserves but it's definitely going to create a great impact for you in the market. So creating positive buzz it's all about blowing your own trumpet and I would personally say that modern advertising is a lot about blowing your own trumpet and look at us we're buying products by the gallon so clearly it works. Okay I'm going to move on to the next one jam session. Now this essentially in music language actually means that you know you're jamming on a musical instrument say with a couple of friends in an impromptu setting. So I have my guitar, you have your drums, someone else is singing. It's an impromptu setting and we're just enjoying ourselves. Now that is a jam session. But in business language this actually means an ideating session. So all of you get together in the boardroom and you know throw ideas at each other. You know what do you want to do next quarter, next year, plan for things, throw ideas, idea it together and that would be your very own boardroom jam session. Now most of these sessions are actually very productive. They give a chance for the employees to express their ideas and actually you know throw out their ideas and actually see if their ideas are workable. So jam sessions are a complete must and if they are not having any in your office I suggest you start some very soon. Moving on the next one like a broken record. Now this doesn't mean that you take your old LP, break it into pieces and then try to play it because that doesn't make any sense. It just means basically someone who's repeating himself over and over again. So essentially like a broken record actually means repeating oneself. So if you're unlucky enough to have a boss who keeps going on and on like a broken record about uh, the lack of your accomplishments or the fact that you have a really large target coming up, now that's the one who's like a broken record and that's where the musical idiom will actually come into play. But trust me, in a business setting, you can't tell your boss to his face that you know what, you're sounding like a broken record. That's something you're going to have to keep to yourself. But yes, that's the usage someone repeating oneself over and over again, you know, repeating the same piece of information, saying the same thing over and over again, you know, and creating a very boring and a very monotonous effect in the listener's mind. So well, those are my six musical idioms which you can use in business English and come across as very cool and savvy. I'm going to go over them one more time. Call the tune which means actually exert your authority or make important decisions. Ring a bell which means actually to recall a piece of information and for a song which means at a very very low cost blow your trumpet it means uh, to brag or boast about your product or achievements jam session which means a session where you sit and ideate throw ideas at each other and the last one for now is like a broken record which means repeating oneself 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 over and over and over again so i don't want to sound like a broken record so i'm going to stop right here and we're going to look at six more of these all right so we're going to look at a list of uh, some more musical idioms that you can use in business english to create a great impression and come across as really cool and savvy 
So, well, the first one on my list for now is blow the whistle. Now, this does not mean that you start blowing a whistle or you start whistling in the middle of your meeting because trust me, that's not going to get you any brownie points. This actually means revealing a piece of information that could have been kept discreet or private. So well, uh, imagine if you have a product that's not really up to the mark and someone blows the whistle on your product and the sales actually dip. Now that is the correct usage for blowing the whistle. Or for example, you have a colleague who's a complete slacker, shows up late to work and actually just offloads all his work onto other people and someone finally decides to blow the whistle and gets him sacked. Well, that's your usage for blowing the whistle. So when my colleague wasn't matching up, you know, to his efficiency and productivity levels, someone blew the whistle and he was sacked. So blowing the whistle, which means revealing a piece of information that was previously kept private or was not meant to be revealed and which has certain repercussions. Well, moving on, the next one would be to face the music. Well, uh, this doesn't mean that you get like a really cool player and sit in front of it and face the music, so to say. It actually means to actually face the consequences. So if you show up late to work, you're going to have to face the music with your boss. So when I decided that I'm going to just not do my work really well. My boss figured out and I was fired and I had to really face the music. So something on those lines, facing the consequences of your actions and mostly this idiom is not positive. It's never used in a positive sense. So if you are, you know, celebrating the success of your achievements, you're not going to say I'm facing the music because this actually, you know, implies negative consequences, you know, where you're not being 100% up to the mark. Well, moving on, harp on it that's right harp the musical instrument and on it now can you guess what this really means imagine carrying a large harp to your office and giving everyone a peaceful soothing musical concert where half your colleagues actually go to sleep that's not the scenario we're talking about harp on it actually means you know to reiterate or revisit the same piece of information over and over and over again. So uh, imagine this quarter I achieved my targets way before everybody else. So what do I do? I go to the boss and I harp on it over and over and over again to actually get into his good books. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of colleagues out there who actually harp on their own tunes all the time and keep talking about the awesome work that they're doing for the company and make it sound like, you know what, if I didn't exist, the company would have gone to the dogs. So that's what essentially harp on it actually means to keep repeating the same piece of information again and again and this can be quite annoying. Well, moving on, the next one on my list is roll the drums. Imagine a drum roll in your office. Well, it's a celebration, definitely. So if your company achieves something stupendous or there's something really, really huge that's happened and you want to celebrate, you could say, well, bring on the drum roll or roll the drums. So, well, the alternate usage for this is bring on the drum roll. And it actually means to declare or to start celebration. So I could say something like after achieving stupendous growth in our company, it was time to bring on the drum roll or it was time to roll the drums, which means to proudly declare that yes, we've done it. I hope that you're able to roll the drums in terms of your work over and over again in your career. I wish you all the very best, but stay with me because I have two more for you. There's music to my ears. No, it doesn't mean that you, you know, plug in, plug in your headphones and keep listening to music all day long in the office. It actually means hearing what you wanted to. So 
So when I told my boss that I had cracked the deal for a song, he was excited and it was like music to his ears, which means he heard exactly what he wanted to hear. He was anticipating this news, expecting the news, and then when he got it, he was pleased to no extent. So music to my ears actually means hearing what you really wanted to hear. So if someone is praising you, praising your accomplishments, your achievements, and you're smiling about it, why are you smiling? You're smiling because it's like music to your ears. So that's the usage for music to my ears. And the last one on my list for today is whistling a different tune. Now this has nothing to do with whistling various types of tunes and showing your versatility as a whistleblower, but uh, it actually means someone changing their mind, you know? Changing their mind. So well, if I say something like, my first client meeting with this particular, particular client was awesome. It was amazing. It was like we were so in sync. And the next time I met him, he was whistling a different tune, which means we were not in complete agreement. The client has changed his mind and we were now at different ends of the spectrum. So if your client changes his mind and starts whistling a different tune, which means your deal's definitely not going to go through or is going to you know, hit many, many roadblocks on the way. So that's the meaning of whistling a different tune. It literally means changing one's mind. So all of these musical idioms that I've shared with you today, you can actually go ahead and use them in your business English, in your day-to-day -day workplaces, with your colleagues, your bosses. So you'll come across as someone who's really polished, really savvy, really cool, knows his English, at the same time knows his music. So well, I really hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and it's time for me, Rima, to say bye-bye. But if you have anything to say to me or if you want to add to my list of musical idioms that you can use at the workplace, do write in in the comments box below. Thank you.